Today is Wednesday, December 15th, and in the news we have Grant Walt, the famous journalist that went viral for being banned from entering the soccer stadium in Qatar to cover the World Cup, has died suddenly, and it is now being revealed how he died. Sam Bankman Freed has been arrested in the Bahamas just hours away from testifying to Congress, making people question the timing of his arrest. President Biden invites Marty Cummings, an anti-police drag queen who also tweeted pedophilic messages to the White House for Same-Sex Marriage Act signing. That was yesterday. And Jordan High School in Long Beach, California, will be the latest to install a Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood quote, well-being center. And protests are already scheduled for tonight's hearing. I am your host, Anthony Cabasa. This is Inform Daily. Let's jump right into that first story. However, before we jump into that first story, if you like what we're doing, please make sure you like, you subscribe, you give us that five-star rating over at the podcast. All of this helps. If you really like what we are doing, make sure you sign up over at the Patreon. Links are everywhere in the descriptions. Even $5 goes a long way. All right, first story. Grant Wall's wife uh, reveals cause of death in first interview since he died. Uh, this was published today, Wednesday. This is by CBS News. Grant Wall's wife, Dr. Celine Gounder, told CBS News on Wednesday the renowned soccer journalist died due to an aortic aneurysm that ruptured. Quote, he had an autopsy done here in New York by the New York City Medical Examiner's Office, and it showed that he had an aortic aneurysm that ruptured, said Gounder, an infectious disease specialist and CBS News contributor. It's just one of these things that had been likely brewing for years, and for whatever reason, hmm, for whatever reason you say, it happened at this point in time, she told CBS Mornings uh, co-host Gail King in her first interview since her husband's passing. While died on Friday at the age of 49, while in Qatar covering the World Cup, his agent Tim Scanlon had said the journalist appeared to have suffered from some sort of acute distress in the press room of the stadium. Uh, I believe there was even like videos um, of this uh, happening that they were performing life-saving uh, uh procedure uh, right there at the journalist, like with the booth and all that stuff. I think they were performing like CPR on the guy. And, and Hey, I, I'm not saying like, Hmm, I wonder what that could be in, in any kind of, you know, disrespectful way, by the way, I, I think that everyone kind of knows why this really happened. You know, his wife is a doctor. They're both, you know, kind of life leaning from, from what we understand, they, they probably got uh, the mandate thing. And um, here we are, man. And, and it's sad because he was a very respectful journalist from what I understand. He had a big following. And of course, he went viral uh, just a, a few weeks ago, actually, November 21st. I'm going to switch it over here for you guys. And uh, this is uh, the New York Post. Grant Wall detained at the World Cup Stadium over LGBTQ shirt. And so I'm sure, you know, a lot of you guys probably saw, you know, the face of of Grant and and the reason why he went viral, this is a picture here. Uh, but, you know, for those of you just listening, uh, this is him in Qatar. He's covering the World Cup and uh, he wore uh, a shirt that kind of had a soccer ball with it and then the, the rainbow uh, over it. Uh, but uh, uh, it says here, and this is again back in, in November 21st, the Qatari crackdown on support for the LGBTQ community has extended to credentialed media. Journalist Grant Wall, who runs a subsack covering soccer and formerly wrote for Sports Illustrated, tweeted that he was not let into the stadium uh, for Monday U.S.-Wales 2022 World Cup match because of the shirt, which had a soccer ball surrounded by a rainbow. Wall tweeted that he was told, quote, you have to change your shirt. It is not allowed. Uh, later in the day, Wall tweeted an update saying he was, quote, OK, but that was an unnecessary ordeal. I'm in the media center still wearing my shirt, uh, was detained for nearly half an hour. Go gaze, Wall wrote. The implication as to why he was detained is not subtle. Um, obviously, you know, uh, and, and this is actually further in, in the article says, uh, earlier on Monday, FIFA threatened European team captains with automatic yellow cards for wearing a one love armband as they had planned to do leading England's Harry Kane to back down and wear a FIFA sanctioned armband instead. Tragic what happened to this journalist. Um, I don't necessarily think that there was any, um, I don't necessarily think that there was anything malicious behind this. And, and if there was by any, you know, means sh there should be an investigation, right? Uh, but uh, obviously you have the wife coming out saying like, no, you know, uh, maybe there's rumors going around that it's because he wore the shirt and, and this is kind of Qatar's government and retaliation. Uh, but I, it seems like all those kind of conspiracies have been qualmed because now the wife has come out and said like, hey, after the autopsy has been revealed that. 
And then we obviously know that, hey, if you uh, are someone that uh, adhere to the mandates, uh, then probably you will have a higher likely, um, you know, uh, chance of something happen to you in, in relations to what happened to this journalist. But also, I wanted to put up this other article, you know, again, rest in peace to this journalist, regardless of what your politics are. It's always tragic when someone young and healthy, um, and, and I think that at the behest of, of the U.S. government forcing these things down people, and not just the U.S. government, but the world, you know, it sucks that we are losing so many people uh, that have side, uh, died suddenly. And, and this is just another article. Uh, it says, Qatari journalists quote, dies suddenly, just like I was talking about, at World Cup shortly after Grant Wall's death. So this is now December 12th. This was about two days ago. And it says a Qatari photographer has died while covering the World Cup, the second journalist to lose his life at the global event following influential U.S. soccer writer Grant Wall's death. Khalid al-Mislam, a photojournalist for local sports outlet at, at Cal, al Cas TV, died on Saturday, the Doha-based Gulf Times reported. Uh, Al Islam and Qatari died suddenly while covering the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. We believe in Allah's mercy and forgiveness for him and send our deepest condolences to his family, the Gulf Times reported on Twitter. The circumstances of Al Islam's death were unclear, but the announcement was made on the same day uh, that the security guard was seriously injured when he fell at Lusaik uh, Iconic Stadium. Uh, so again, you know, this is, uh, and, and here's a picture, you know, for Grant Wall, but apparently a second journalist has also died suddenly. Uh, I believe there's actually a documentary. Have you seen that, Sal, by chance? Have you seen the documentary or have you heard of it? No, I, I believe that there is a documentary that's going around and it's called Died Suddenly. And um, this is something that uh, uh, has been going around, something that people have been watching. I watched it myself. Um, highly recommend it for anyone you know listening. Uh, this is a documentary you, I think you you would want to see, and I think it ties into all these people. You know, if you, if you just do a Google search of "died suddenly," you'll you'll find. I mean, I mean, just we we could probably just even do it now. Let me see. Google died suddenly. And then second World Cup journalist died suddenly. Um, American soccer sports writer died suddenly, died suddenly, died suddenly. Well, you know what? It's probably because we're on Google, but I'm sure if you, again, if you go into like just any search bar outside of Google, I'm sure that you could probably find that for some reason, there's a lot of died suddenlies. And again, you know, this has nothing to do. Per I'm not personally attacking. I'm not saying, Hey, maybe you should have made a decision. I feel sorry. I, I feel bad. And I feel, you know, disgusted that, that this is happening in, in today's world where you have young, healthy people uh, that were, you know, forced to do something. And, and, and now we have all these died suddenly and man, you know, just pray, just praying for people. And, and that's all we really can do. Moving over to uh, young people. Uh, we have this other story here. Sam Bankman Freed, he actually has been arrested. He was arrested about two days ago. I believe it was Monday night. Uh, he was in the Bahamas. He was actually supposed to testify um, from the Bahamas. He said he was going to be testifying remotely from the Bahamas, to the best of our knowledge, uh, before Congress. And, and supposedly people were saying that he was going to sing like a canary. He was getting ready to testify before Congress, kind of tell him everything that happened. And obviously, I've told you guys before that, you know, Sam Bankman Freed, uh, the, the FTX crypto exchange, you know, uh, collapse, basically, that that lost, you know, uh, billions of dollars of, of customers and clients and and how he was funneling money over to Democrats. You know, I, I probably got some, you know, people saying, you know, oh, come on, that's not true. That there, There's no way that's happening, you know, um, but I do want to make it clear. Give me one second here, guys. Whoops. Here we go. Here we go. OK. I, I do want to make it clear that today, the Washington Post, and I'm going to read this article, uh, has kind of dissected some of those donations. The Washington Post, of all people. But, yeah, we're going to go ahead. And uh, so it says, the President Bankman Freed hugs his parents as he is denied bail and sent to overcrowded hellhole in the Bahamas jail. As prosecutors say, he hid 300 million Brazilian firm before collapse of X FTX exchange. Disgraced FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed has been denied bail as he fights extradition to the United States and the Bahamas after being charged with one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. Bankman Freed is accused of defrauding investors out of $1.8 by convincing them his trading platform FTX was safe to use. 
He has been holed up in the Bahamas for weeks, but today was denied bail after prosecutors argued in court that he was a flight risk. They claimed he hid $300 million in a Brazilian, in a Brazilian fund in September, uh, months before the collapse of his crypto trading platform as a means of setting himself up for an escape when the inevitable happened. And then here we have... This is basically what he is uh, being charged with. So, again, prior to this, he hadn't been charged with anything. But this is CBS News. Uh, Sam Bankman free charged with fraud and money laundering. I actually tuned in to the press briefing yesterday. There was a press briefing by the Southern District of New York, uh, which was the one that basically put out the order to have him arrest, uh, the warrant for the arrest. And, and I believe they said that it was, if I'm not mistaken it's been about a week in the working of actually being able to press up charges what they're going to be charging him with and then the warrant for his arrest and then ultimately he's now you know been arrested so it says here federal prosecutors on tuesday charge ftx trading founder sam pankman freed with eight counts of fraud money laundering and other financial crimes according to an indictment unsealed tuesday stupid pop-ups the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York alleges Bankman Free knowingly defrauded customers by using their cryptocurrency assets to pay for debts and expenses incurred by FTX's hedge fund, Alameda Research. Bankman Free and other accomplices also purposely submitted inaccurate documents to lenders who sent funds to Alameda according to the indictment. This is big no-no. You're not supposed to do this. It doesn't matter who you are. And I guess at this point, it doesn't even matter who you're donating. I'm very surprised that this guy is facing prosecution. I, I, I guess, you know, they sometimes they say, oh, so at, at one point you're too big to fail, but not this guy. It says, quote, it's fair to say that by anyone's license, this is one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. Wow. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said during a press conference in Manhattan on Tuesday, says the unsealed indictment also accuses Bankman Freed of violating political contribution laws by donating to candidates and committees in New York under another person's name. Oh, now it's getting spicy. Bankman Freed made, quote, tens of millions of dollars uh, in contributions to both Democrats and Republicans in order to sway public policy, Williams said. Now, Remember this quote right here. It says to both Democrats and Republicans, because this next article that I'm about to read by the by the Washington Post to kind of give you guys some context of who he has been donating to and why and, and why it matters, etc. cetera. Uh, they keep saying Democrats and Republicans, but just keep that in mind. It says in order to sway public policy, Williams said these contributions, quote, these contributions were disguised to look like they were coming from wealthy co-conspirators when, in fact, the contributions were funded by Alameda Research with stolen customer money. He said a lawyer from Bankman Freed, Mark S. Cohen, said to, uh, Tuesday that Bankman Freed is reviewing the charges with his legal team and considering his options. The maximum potential prison sentence for these charges is 115 years. Bro, I know people. I know people who have killed with lesser sentencing than that, but uh, no, this is good. According to Nicholas Bias, a spokesperson for the U.S. prosecutors. So again, here you have this guy that rose to fame. He, he, he made all this money, and I'm sure to some extent there's so many people that are involved with this, right? You, you, you have politicians, and look, at the end of the day, that's really what it boils down to. Right. It's politicians are saying, what billionaires can we work with? Can we help, you know, break the laws, bend the laws or who can we just kind of turn an, a blind eye to uh, if, if we stand to gain from this? And and this is the problem. And and, and look, you know, I'm, I'm not here to advocate for socialism. I'm not here to advocate for someone like Bernie Sanders. But this is the populism of Bernie Sanders that people appeal to this this dark secret money that these people continue to funnel through corporations like Bankman's Freed, whether it's the FTX crypto exchange or whether it's the Alameda Research, all these little bogus fronts that you know you can money launder. It, it, it's getting to the point where I, I think people both on the left and the right are sick and tired of watching the corruption and, and no one's being held accountable. Sure, Sam Bankman Freed is being held accountable, but he's not a lone accomplice. Right. He's he's not a he it's not like he's working alone here. It's not like people that he worked with didn't stand to why weren't you know Democrats concerned about this? Why aren't they investigating? Like, wait, let's make sure that the money that we're getting in, like, wait, wait a minute, we're getting hundreds of millions in donations, you know, not one specific person, but just throughout, like, and we're not trying to find out where this company is from or where they're coming from. Like at some point, politicians have to take that accountability. 
right? It, it, it can't just fall on Sam Bankman for he's, he's like the schmuck. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's just like this horny young guy. And I, and I say that in the context that this guy's out here, you know, it's already been revealed having orgies and, and, and sex scandals and whatever else, which, Hey, whatever, he's a private citizen. You know, this is the, the, the what people want to trust and, and they want to go into crypto with this guy. Hey, whatever that that's on you. You know, I've, I've never been a crypto guy. I've invested here and there, never really understood it. And, and now that the government is kind of cracking down on it. Well, you know, I, I, I guess I was uh, not right from the beginning. There's a lot of people I'm sure are a lot richer because of crypto, but uh, again, looking at Sam Bankman Freed, what he's doing, what it, one has to wonder uh, what was really going on here. Is there more to this story than, than just this young guy, you know, out there trying to make billions and then funneling money over to politicians? And this is where now we go into the Washington Post and it says breaking down. Again, I'm very shocked. This came out just today, by the way, uh, December 14th. Uh, this is, yeah. 12 minutes ago, or I, I, I pulled this up. I was thankfully able to pull this up right before we uh, started recording. But it says, breaking down Sam Bankman Freed's political donations, mostly to Democrats. Now, again, what did we read in the article before? It said Democrats and Republicans, right? So this is what I wanted you guys to hear. So this is, again, the Washington Post. It says, Sam Bankman Freed, the disgrace, the disgrace founder of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX, was a prolific political donor pumping about $40 million this cycle alone into campaign committees and other groups mostly aligned with Democrats, federal records show. His contributions are under scrutiny as federal prosecutors on Tuesday alleged that Bankman Freed had broken campaign finance laws by sourcing donations from his related crypto hedge funds, Alameda Research, and falsely reporting them as originating from other people. His largesse to Democratic causes was surpassed over the past two years only by that of George Soros. Have you ever heard of George Soros, Sal? He's a good guy, right? Yeah, he's a he's a good. We we love George Soros. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, this is where we are, right? And and again, no one's raising alarms. Like, let's you know, I I was watching. Uh, I think it was MSNBC. I don't know who it was, but they were talking about you know this case here. And they were saying, like, let's be honest here. Like, this wasn't the Southern District of New York landing a whale of a case. This guy did this to himself. So if you really think about it, had this guy not self-imploded, this guy would still probably be behind the scenes, behind the curtain, funneling all this money over to Democrats. And it wasn't because – and it wasn't up until he self-collapsed, self-imploded, and, and, and now there's a problem. And then now federal law enforcement wants to come in like, oh, wow, look at what we did. Shut up, you schmucks. You did nothing. You know, this guy self-imploded. This is the only reason why we're having to hear about this. But again, hey, good for the team that's putting this together. Good for this journalist that, that broke this down, by the way. And, and now we know that <laughs> the only other contributor to Democrats larger than him was George Soros, the liberal financier. The report says Bankman Freed has claimed that he gave just as much to GOP causes, but, and this is where we get to the good stuff, Bankman Freed has claimed that he gave just as much, just as much. So people are trying to use this and saying like, well, he didn't just donate to Democrats. He also donated to the GOP. So, huh. And I'm like, okay. It says, but through nonprofit groups. So this is how he donated to the GOP causes. But he did donate, but through nonprofit groups not required to disclose their donors. Hmm. So to Democrats, he openly did it. He was willing to risk putting on record false names and false companies and, and whatever else to funnel money to Democrats. But to Republicans, he, he outsmarted the feds by putting it through nonprofits. Mm. Me thinks this is BS. Why would you? Why would you know to go through nonprofit groups to funnel money to Republicans, but not do the same for Democrats? Hey, I don't know. I'm not a financier. This is not financial advice. I'm not telling you how to get away with murder <laughs> by any means necessary or financial uh, disclosures here. But hey, uh, it might not be malicious intents. I don't know. But it is just kind of a, a question that I had when I read this. And it says, much of the money Bankman Freed gave went to super PACs. 
These groups, which can uh, accept unlimited individual and corporate uh, contributions, must remain formally separate from campaigns as they run ads or sponsor or other communications supporting or opposing candidates. So here it has um, Sam Bankman's uh, field contributions to PACs and parties since 2020. Uh, the, the highest one, uh, which was $27 million, bro, that's such an insane amount of money. It goes to protect our future PAC. Group bankrolled by Bankman Freed focused on candidates aligned with effective altruism goals. So liberals. The House Majority PAC. Super PAC supporting House Democrats. $6 million. The GMI PAC. Group supporting crypto-friendly candidates. $2 million. America United. Super PAC supporting Latino House candidates. $1.3 million. SMP. Super PAC supporting Senate Democrats. $1 million. DNC services, the Democrat National Committee, $365,000. Vote Rev PAC, Democrat Aligned Group Focus on Voter Turnout, $350,000. Democratic Aligned Super PAC, Opportunity for Tomorrow, $300,000. Group Backing Pro Israel Democrats, DMFI PAC, $250,000. The DCCC, the Democratic House Campaign Arm, $250,000. I mean, it just goes on. Democrat Aligned Super PAC, Democrat Aligned Super PAC. Democrat Senate campaign arm, Democratic aligned group. I mean, it, it it shows 32 Democrat supports Democratic candidates in Maine, supports Democratic candidates in Maryland, so, supports Democratic candidates in Virginia. I don't see a single. Where's a Republican one? Where are the Republicans? Leadership pack for Tom O'Halloran, Arizona. Leadership pack for Representative Jimmy Panetta, D, California. PAC associated with Rep. Gosh Gothheimer, Democrat, Democrat, another Democrat. All Democrats. So, so again, the ones receiving millions, all Democrats. And then you go down to like the 10,000s, 5,000s, 5,000s, all Democrat, Democrat, Democrat. So, again, it's really interesting to see that he was really smart in funneling money over to, to Republicans using nonprofits that are not – uh, do not have to disclose, you know, finance contributions, but not smart enough to do it for Democrats. Hmm. Really interesting. And hey, you know what? I want to know. I want to know what Republicans stood to benefit from him and how much money was sent their way. I'm not here saying it didn't happen. I want to know. This is like the problem that I, I sometimes have with people where they're like, oh, yeah, well, well, what about the Republicans? I'm like, no, yes, I agree. Absolutely. Let's find out which Republicans also. So I'm hoping that through all of this, this this large scandal of FTX and, and the crypto and the, and the money fund uh, funneling over to 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 Democrats and Republicans. Let's investigate. Let's do a deep dive. I want to know also. One of the things that people kind of falsely accuse me of just because I, you know, I am a conservative man is that I am very biased or that sometimes I, I choose what to cover and what not to cover. Obviously, in the news, you know, I, I try to grab the most trending things, uh, things that, you know, some people are talking about. But also, I, I talk to my audience and I say, what things are you not hearing about that we should be hearing about? And, and then they tell me, you know, like today, for example, I'm going to be talking about uh, this Planned Parenthood clinic uh, opening up in Long Beach High School, uh, Jordan High School, I believe uh, that's the name of the school. And, and, you know, that's not something that necessarily people nationally want to hear about. But, hey, people here in California, I, I do live here in Los Angeles County. This affects my area specifically. Uh, but, but all in all, to say, like, I, I'm not against justice equally. Like, let justice be served. Let people be investigated. Let both Democrats and Republicans be exposed. I'm all for that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what my political linings are. It doesn't matter what political leanings I have. What matters is that justice is served. And if it's Republicans, then so be it. Let's make it happen. Let's get rid of corruption. Oh, but what about this candidate? Yes. Okay. So then let's investigate. Let's do it. Um, I'm with you. You know, but as evidenced by the Washington Post of all people who would probably do better digging and have better resources and better journalists that hate Republicans and would pounce, pun intended, uh, at, at anything Republican bad, they couldn't find anything. 
They said it's mostly being funneled over to Democrats. This is massive news, as it rightfully should be. This guy is now facing 115 years. So, you know, only only time will tell what exactly is happening there. And, and, and you know, hey, man, I'm, I'm all for it. Let, let's get it done. Let this guy, you know, be served at the highest. Let this be a lesson to others. And, you know, again, let's let's not be foolish here. This isn't because, you know, the FBI really cares about who's funneling money over to politicians or the IRS. This is a guy that self imploded. This is a guy that did it to himself. He was too big to fail. Well, his greediness, his, his lying, his funneling money using shell companies, whatever it might be, Alameda company, it's finally caught up to him. And, hey, you're going to have to pay the piper, man. You know, it is what it is, man. So in this next story, we have drag queen Marty Cummings, who will be at the White House today. This was yesterday. I want to uh, quote, I want to live in a time when our kids can go to a library and see drag artists reading stories to them without the proud boy showing up to protest. And then this is a video. I'll put it up here for you guys. Hi. I want to live in a time. Oh, give me one second. Got to fix the audio here. There we go. Should be good to go now. Sal, let me know on the audio. I, I want to live in a time when our kids can go to a library and see drag artists reading stories to them without the threat of the Proud Boys showing up to protest. And just today I read. So the reason why I'm pulling up this video is because I hear often uh, that you know, oh, well, you know, drag queens, are. it's not that they're inviting children out or it's not like they really want to do this. It, it, it It's really mostly on the parents, which, hey, to some degree, I absolutely agree with that statement. It, it's ultimately on the parents to make that decision. Do I wish to take my child to a drag queen story or yes or no? And, and you know, shame on those parents. And, and you know, one of the things that I, I often hear is like, well, what do you? Oh, yeah, Anthony. So you got a problem with drag queen story hour. So so what about, you know, those competitions, you know, like Little Miss Darlings or or these pageants for for little girls where adults can go and watch them? Yeah, let's ban that also. I'm OK with that. Anything that for, you know, forces children. I guess you can use that term loosely because to some degree they have to consent to it. Right. That, that, that puts these children on stages wearing skimpy clothes or, or having to perform for adults for entertainment. I, I and again, th- th- I'm not saying in general, but specifically drag queen and, and be- these little kids' beauty pageants. There's something just off about it. There's, there's something about like, vo- like as a, imagine being like a single adult, especially at these drag queen story hours. You probably have, don't have any kids or, you know, whatever it is, what the kind of might be. And you're like, I want to go see these kids. I want them. I, I want to see them perform. I, I want to see them dance, whatever it might be. And and they're wearing skimpy clothes or whatever it might be. I, I just have a problem with that. That it just sounds off to me. And it's not just me. It's I think an overwhelming majority of the population has a problem with this. I've seen some of these beauty ba- beauty pageants for for children. I'm not okay with it. Like the fake hair or the overdoing it and and the amount of of makeup and all this stuff, like at such a young age, you're already being exposed to this. They're like only grow up and be like, beauty is, is all that matters. And in and, and, and life, all you need to compete is to just be the most beautiful person. I'm okay with that. So it's not a gotcha. And hey, I, not everyone agrees. There's a lot of conservatives that would probably listen to this. A lot of Christians, a lot of people that, hey, I disagree, Anthony. You're, you're, you've gone overboard. That's this is my personal opinion. This is my personal stance. So to the people that continue to say like, oh, so Anthony, oh, so 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 you're not okay with with this, be, but you're okay with that. Like, no, I'm I'm not. So so we can just get over that. We can we can you can stop you know messaging me like, hey Anthony, why are you okay with this but not that? It's like no, that I'm I'm equally disgusted by both. Truth be told. So this is Fox News here. The White House invited Marty Gold Cummings, a non-binary drag queen who has repeatedly attacked police online to attend the Respect for Marriage Act signing ceremony Tuesday. 
Cummings thanked President Biden and First Lady Joe Biden and shared an image of the digital invitation on social media post Monday. Uh, last week, the House passed the legislation which managed the federal government recognize same-sex marriages in, uh, in states uh, where they are legal in a 258-169 vote that included 29 Republican votes day, uh, days after the Senate approved the bill in a 61-36 vote. To be, quote, to be a, a non-binary drag artist invited to the White House is something I never imagined would happen, Cummings tweeted. Uh, thank you, President and Dr. Biden, for inviting me to the to the historic bill signing. Grateful doesn't begin to express the emotions I feel. Following the tweet and reports related to previous posts, Cummings locked multiple social media accounts from public view. Well, why would someone that's publicly thanking the president for inviting him to the White House, such a honorable cause, right? So it's such a great place to be, the White House. Why would he lock his account? Well, as it usually often happens, Someone this high profile, someone going to the White House of all places, right? An honorable and respectable house, or at least it used to be. Um, and, and, and so people are going to start like, hmm, who is this Marty Cummings fellow? Why are they getting invited to the White House? And what is their philosophy? So it says Cummings is a New York City based drag artist, uh, quote, drag artist, uh, television personality and political figure. According to Cummings website, the site adds that Cummings has been a regular fixture in the city's nightlife and regularly performs six shows a week. Bro, that's 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 dedication right there, bro. Like <laughs> six nights a week, bro. I know conservatives who don't even work that hard. Got to step it up, man. But no, here here are some of the tweets. And it says, you know. Uh, the New York City Police Department are scared, whiny, and weak. Uh, the people will win. Hashtag defund the police. Um, it says uh, ACAP, which is like a trope against uh, police. All cops are bastards. Or, you know, the B can be replaced with any derogatory B word or whatever. Uh, so clearly this person is anti-police. The one thing I will say, and, and I'm not trying to defend the guy, is, again, Aren't we the side of free speech? So, you know, if, if the president wants to invite these kind of people and look, President Trump, he literally just had dinner with Kanye West, Nick Fuentes and Milo Yiannopoulos. So I, I think the more hypocritical thing about all of this is that the same people that had a problem with who President Trump was meeting with don't have a problem with this person. Right. All cops are bastards. F the police, defund the police, anti-police. And that's not the only bad tweet, by the way. I don't think I wasn't able to find it because I think it's been deleted. Um, but there was another tweet. So this is more tweets F the police. There was one where it said something to the and you can look this up. I, I just wasn't able to find it in the in the in the time that I but he said something like the boys let the boys out and and getting like the d word like the, the boys are out to sing and get d deed you know the the slur for for the genital down there for males um or trans males now but but it's just again if, you, if you're gonna have a problem with who donald trump meets or invites to the white house but defend people like this you know that that puts out these tweets saying that the boys are out and ready to get you know, whatever. Again, I don't I don't remember exactly the context behind that, but it was pretty disgusting. And there's also images of the guy like I'm going to spare you. I'm going to save your eyes. Uh, you don't have to see that, especially for those listeners. You're, you, you know, you're probably glad that you don't get to see any of this. But again, if you're going to be OK with Donald Trump, then you have to be OK with President Biden, and who, who they invite. Right. Granted, obviously, context matters. What are they talking about? Who are these people being invited I can easily see the Biden administration overlooking something like this. Like, hey, we want to invite, you know, drags and, and, and LGBT members of the LGBT community uh, to come out in this historic signing for them. And, and this is their moment. And they lit up, you know, the White House uh, in rainbow colors to kind of stand in solidarity or to celebrate, you know, the same sex marriage act. Um, and, 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 and so be it. But I mean, not surprised. Now, I, I'll be very honest with you. The police thing is not what worries me the most. You know what I mean? It's 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 the normalization of this lifestyle and and wanting people that are okay with dancing in front of 
of children, you know, in a sexual manner. That's what I have the biggest problem with. Like, in my opinion, people like that should not be invited to the White House. It's just, you know, it's it's de it's degenerate in nature. You are normalizing this, which is all it boils down to. We talked about the normalization of degeneracy on yesterday's video. We shouldn't we shouldn't be normalizing this. We, we shouldn't be, you know, virtue signaling to the nation that like, hey, uh, here at the White House, we are hosting people that are completely fine with sexualizing children, with grooming children to be sexualized and, and to be at these adult themed bars restaurants or, or shows, whatever it might be, to come here and hand us dollar bills while we perform sexually explicit or provocatively dances in front of them for, for fun. And it's not me telling you this. I just showed you the video of this man stating that that's what he wants to do. He says, I want to be able to have drag shows for children without having protesters show up. Well, that's probably not going to happen because now more and more people are getting to see what happens at these drag queen story hours for children or, or whatever it is, not just drag story time, but also drag dancing or entertainment for children. And people are like, this is not okay. So people are going to show up and protest what they can. It's legal to go out there and protest these things and say, hey, this is not right. This is not what we want in our city, in our community. This is not what we stand for. We, we have a problem with this. And if they want to you know, push legislation to be like, hey, this shouldn't be happening, period, regardless of where you are, regardless of anything, then, then that's within their right. So long as they're not you know, heading in there with bats and stuff and, and smashing the place up or destroying property or, or hurting people. Uh, there's nothing wrong with, with showing up to protest, you know, and, and this is what the people are doing. And this guy is saying, like, we I want to get to a place where we're no longer protested for this. Well, it's probably not going to happen, man. The vast majority of the population don't want to see this happening, especially to children. It's one thing if you're an adult, you want to be a consenting adult. You want to go out there. You, you want to go watch something risque like that. You want to go to your local drag story time or whatever else drag themed you're 18 you're 19 you're an adult whatever man you know but to, to, to just start doing this with children even if it's consensual and, and that's really what it boils down to folks like that that's kind of like where i have like i've always had the problem and i've and i've made this argument before if you're if your argument for allowing this is that kids can consent or that the kids do consent, where do we draw the line? What else can kids consent to that you might have a problem with that no, will no longer matter or should no longer matter or should no longer be legally banned from happening because the kids can now consent? This is what we have seen in the last decade or so, exponentially more just recently. What we are watching, what we are, what we are listening to, what we are seeing unfold be before our very eyes is age of consent laws here in California for medical procedures. We're now saying 12, year, 12 years and older, you should be able to make your own medical decisions. I don't agree with that. Now, the law passed, so who cares what I, well, my opinion is because the law passed. That's what the people wanted or that's what the people tolerate or that's what the people allow then so be it. That's that's what's going to happen, right? There's nothing I can do. If that's what the overwhelming of California wants, or at least the California voters, that's what they're going to get. That's what they voted for or did not vote for. That's what it is. But, but again, the question is, if we're going to allow and continue to allow the spaces of, 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 of conversation of, well, why do you care? This doesn't affect you. And the child is consenting. Where does that stop? Where does that go from here? And if you establish that foundation of, okay, well, this is good because it doesn't affect us. B, because the child has consented to this. And C, um, this is the way we want it. This is what we want. And, 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 you know, there's no laws against this. Then where does it go from there? That's where my mind goes and says, wait a minute, what? Where is this headed? If we don't stop this now, if we don't battle this now, 
if we don't stop normalizing this now, where is society headed? And I think it's not going in the right way. That is what I'll say with that. But this last uh, article or this last topic that I'll be talking about is uh, about a plant parenthood. Um, there was, if you guys are not aware, and I'll read the article for you guys so you guys can have better context. And this is not going to be from a news site. This is straight from Plant Parenthood's website. But um, this is the only tweet that I could really find or anything really on social media. Um, it, this is obviously by someone that's opposing what's about to happen. But Legsit, uh, for those of you who don't know, Legsit is a conservative Hispanic Latino activist group that is, uh, you know, hyper focused here in Los Angeles because this is where it originated out of. Uh, we actually had the founder, Jesse Holguin, um, uh, on an uh, interview, Let's Talk, yesterday, uh, Tuesday, and that's going to air this Friday um, at 4 p.m. Uh, for everyone to hear. That's going to be on audio and uh, video here on YouTube, so you guys can find out what they're doing, like the activism that they're doing. But it says here, Legsit is falsely calling uh, Planned Parenthood Los Angeles High School Wellbeing Center's, quote, abortion clinics. Uh, they will be agitating at Long Beach Unified on December 14th, which is today, Wednesday. Take note, they successfully shut down discussion at Norwalk, El, uh, La Mirada District in July. More on clinics. So this is, you know, Legsit, again, they're activists. A lot of them are parents. I personally know a lot of the Legsit activists. Um, and, and I know that they do really good work in exposing what is happening, what is transpiring. And again, look. You can have opposing views, but when you try to silence people trying to disseminate information or raise the alarm on something that is happening locally and, and, and you start saying, well, they should not be able to publicly, uh, you know, air their grievances or come out and protest just because their views are different from mine. That's where I say, no, that's not OK. I don't have to agree completely with Planned Parenthood. I don't have to agree with what they're doing in the schools, which I'm about to read off for you guys. I don't have to agree with Lexit 100%. You know, some of their actions, some of the things they say, it doesn't matter. But they should have the freedom to express it and, and do it in a peaceful manner. So this is the Planned Parenthood. This was back in 2019. And so, you know, Planned Parenthood uh, website, it says Planned Parenthood Los Angeles announces landmark program and partnership of high school based, quote, well-being centers across L.A. County. And again, this is for immediate release December 11, 2019. So this is almost three years old. It says Los Angeles, California. Today, Planned Parenthood Los Angeles, PPLA, along with officials from the county of Los Angeles, including the Board of Supervisors, the Department of Public Health. Actually, I'm going to maximize this for you guys. I know you guys like being able to read it as well. Um, and mental health, DMH, the Los Angeles County Office of Education, LACOE, and the Los Angeles Unified School District, LAUSD, announced a landmark program that will open 50 well-being centers in Los Angeles high schools to provide health care services. And this is, I'm going to highlight this because I want to come back to this. Health care services, education, parent resources and support, and more to students on campus. This is a first of its kind collaboration between local partners to address the social, emotional, the social, emotional and sexual health needs of young people throughout Los Angeles County. Sexual health needs. What the hell? The on-campus well-being centers aim to create a safe space in each school where students can receive the education and health services they need to lead healthy lives. Now open in five high schools, the centers will eventually open on 50 high school campuses across L.A. County and will offer services, including, and this is very important, this is what they're saying their services will offer, health and wellness education services, that doesn't sound like abortion services, sexual health services, that potentially could be, peer leadership, peer leadership opportunities, kind of vague, parent education and support, doesn't sound like abortion services, and more. That's very vague. So they're opening up these, these well-being centers. And the argument to be had here is, is this what Planned Parenthood, who is most famously known for, despite them being, you know, low percentage of abortions performed at Planned Parenthood, obviously they offer many more services, but Planned Parenthood is known as an abortion service center as well. Why are they opening up well-being centers at high schools and focusing specifically with sex, sexual health needs of young people? So going back to the highlighted part here, 
healthcare services. This is one of those things that, you know, I don't know the exact term uh, lawyers use for this, but this could be used to perform abortion services because abortion is, what do they say? Abortion is healthcare. This is what they have said before. This is what they say today. This is what all Democrats in the Senate voted for. They said abortion is health care. And what do we have here? Health care services. Does that specifically mean abortion services? Maybe not. But if it were to be done, well, it falls under this category. So they broke no laws. And lo and behold, in California, medical procedures, age of consent, is now 12. What is going on here? This is why people are protesting, because people are connecting the dots and they're saying this should not be happening. One of the things that a lot of black and Hispanic Latino conservative activists or just parent activists or just people that disagree with Planned Parenthood or disagree with pro-abortion, disagree with Planned Parenthood, say, you guys are targeting us. You're doing it in Los Angeles because we have a higher density population of Latinos, Blacks, Hispanics, of minority groups. And you're why, why, why are you doing this? People have the right to ask these questions. Now, what this uh, guy did post, it says, uh, take note, they successfully shut down discussion at Norwalk La Mirada District in July. So if you're not aware, uh, Norwalk uh, La Mirada High School, uh, they were also thinking of doing this at a high school. And, and when the board meeting commenced to decide whether they're going to go through with the plan after all or not, uh, Lexit and other parents, it's not just this, this is what I really hate about like p- people like this is they, they try to paint the picture that these are right wing extremists, that these are, you know, proud boys or militant groups. It's not that there might be some factions of them there, but it's not entirely it. There's a lot of pissed off parents. You guys have seen, we have all witnessed all these school board meetings being flooded by parents pissed off about what's going on in their schools. This is no different. People want to know what is going on. Why are we opening up Planned Parenthood clinics inside of high schools? Is this really about the well-being of students or is something more sinister happening here? What did we talk about yesterday? Remember that video that I showed you about the KGB agent? It's all about the normalization of degeneracy. So if we start normalizing Planned Parenthood clinics inside of high schools, what is that going to do moving forward? Three generations from today, four generations from today, are abortions really just going to be so common in high school that it's now time to move on to middle school? This is called the slippery slope. Now, a lot of people call it a fallacy or a conspiracy But where are we today? Have things gotten better morally or have things gotten much worse? Let's be honest here, right? And I think it's safe to say things have gotten very worse. So just to finish up this article here, I make sure that I don't click out of it. This was um, Alexis. This was a statement by Alexis McGill Johnson, interim president and CEO, Planned Parenthood Federation of America. "Quote: All young people deserve to have the education, resources, and skills they need to make informed decisions about their health, their relationships, and their futures. This groundbreaking program means that students don't have to worry about missing school just to access the quality healthcare, education, and resources they need." Too many young people don't have access to the healthcare information. They need to live their healthiest lives. And these well-being centers are helping to change that. I don't like how that's worded. It says, this groundbreaking program means that students don't have to worry about missing school just to access a quality healthcare. Well, what happens usually when a student misses school because they have to set up a healthcare appointment? Who goes with that student, with that child? The parent does well do away with having to take your parent with you. And, and I like how they've always phrased this, dude. It's, it's always like this. They try to phrase it as a good, but again, let's cut through the BS here. This groundbreaking program means that students don't have to worry about missing school just to access a quality healthcare. 
Now you can do it right here at the high school. You don't even have to worry about bringing your parent in. Just you and the doc. It goes on. This program is an example of how communities can work together to listen to the needs of the young people and get them the resources they need to protect their health and plan and to protect their health and plan their futures. This is who Planned Parenthood is. Yeah, okay. Innovated, <laughs> expert, and fully committed to breaking down barriers and reaching people wherever they are with education and care, no matter what. I think it is disgusting. I think what is happening at this at these high schools is is disgusting. I, I I don't agree with this. I think it is morally wrong. I don't like that the president of Planned Parenthood is saying you no longer have to skip school. You no longer have to take your parent to the doc. You can now just have these things here for free at our local high school. No parent needed. That's not okay with me. Why is it that the government is so hell driven on removing the parent from the equation? I think we can all guess as to why. And I think it's malevolent. I think it's wrong. And I think it should be outright protested. That's what's going to happen today. There's already a protest happening today. They're going to be protesting this because, hey, we don't want this. And this is and this is ultimately what it gets down to. The only people that can make the change is you. Stop waiting for politicians to be elected. Stop waiting for that president in 2024 or 2028 or whenever it happens. It is you, the parent. It is we, the people, it is you, the American resident citizen, that is going to make the difference. You don't want this in your child's school? Then go protest it. Go do something about it. Oh, you work? So does everyone else. Work is not an excuse anymore. You have to get involved. You have to get involved. It's like they say, if you're not teaching your kids, someone else is. And this is exactly what they're trying to do with this. They want to remove you, the parent, you, the adult, from the equation so they can take full control of now even your children's medical decisions. This is what they do with policies. This is what the legislators, people like Sen Senator Scott Wiener over in San Francisco, people that have no children, that probably will never have children, making these decisions for you as a parent, stripping you away from your rights. And it is far due time that something is done about that. And good on Lexit and the activists, remain peaceful, remain calm, God's got this. We'll be praying for you guys. And, and hopefully, just like you guys did in La Mirada High School, this is thwarted here today too. But with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up today's news. We want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you know, If you like the work that we're doing, make sure you like and subscribe. You can head on over to uh, our shop, informwithanthony.com. We got new merch. Trust God. Sweaters just came down. It's getting nippy out there, folks. It is getting nippy. Every day I wake up uh, with my car covered in frost now. So you want those Trust God sweaters, uh, not just to keep you warm from the cold, but also keep the devil away um, and all his sinister plans. Uh, no, but with that, again, thank you guys so much for your support. Like, subscribe, share if you like what we're doing. And uh, also, if you want to become a monthly contributor, uh, Patreon link is down below. Even $5 makes a huge difference. God bless you guys. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, Thursday, December 15th. God willing. Peace.